CataractCoach.com. Do not overinflate with OVD. More viscoelastic means you're going to cause this rexus to run out. Watch carefully now. So we've got an anonymous resin doing this case. Here's the needle decompression of the lens. That's an intumescent white cataract. Getting that rexus started with that, very nicely done. Now going over the caps rexus forceps, getting the rexus completed. That looks pretty good. Now keep going, keep going. Now the little bit of loss of viscoelastic from the incision is going to cause the AC to flatten a little bit. And now you see the rexus wants to run out. Here's the mistake. Put in a little viscoelastic. That's enough. Stop. But if you keep going and inject more, you're going to put pressure on that lens capsule and you're going to cause it to zip right out just like that. Now what? Now, okay, try to go through the side port, try cut the capsule now, but it's already ran out to the zonular support. So what are you going to do now? The challenge here in doing the cataract surgery is if you put stress on that bag where you have the radialized capsule, What's going to happen? It's going to run out to the equator, and then, if you put more pressure, to the posterior capsule. So the issue here was injecting too much viscoelastic. You had way too much viscoelastic in there, and then that pushed on the lens capsule and caused that rexus to radialize. Let's see the technique here. We sped the video up, obviously. So groove down the middle, maybe a stop and chop. Reasonable amount of density to that nucleus, too. Now, you got to be careful because think about where is the rip in the anterior lens capsule? It's sub-incisional. So if you now put force on that capsule, like when you crack the nucleus into two halves, if you put too much force, you can cause that tear to rip around to the equator and then posterior capsule. So here, I like the idea of bringing the nuclear pieces out of the bag a little bit. I certainly want to remind you about cataractcoach.com, the actual website. People are saying, well, where's the free PDF book? You have to leave YouTube. There's no book section on YouTube. Go to cataractcoach.com. I promise you will figure it out. You're smart. Now, let's go back to this case here. Removing that nucleus. I also wish we had better draping here. Look at those little inferior lashes scraping on the cornea. Eh, not my favorite. But you see the nuclear pieces coming out here. Cataract's almost done. And then being careful not to let that capsule come up. And then let's see what we got next. Take out the last couple of pieces of your pipe. Switch over to the IA probe. I like the idea of putting a little viscoelastic in now. Keep that bag supported and inflated. But don't overly inflate it. Remember, viscoelastic is, is strong substance here. OVD can certainly push tissues around. And it can also, as we saw at the beginning of this, it can push that rexus right out radial towards the zonal support. Now, by manual IA, I like that idea here because you're going to have a lot more control and get that... 360 access to the capsular bag equator and get the cortex out. And I do agree, I would do that radialized area last. Now you should be thinking, what should we do now for an IOL? Think about it. What would you do here? Well, I still think you can get a single piece lens in the bag. I think it should be fine. I don't think there'll be much of an issue there as long as you're gentle in inserting the lens. And so sometimes a single piece acrylic lens is the easiest to insert because it comes in the aisle rolled up and you've got a nice buffer of maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds to get it positioned before the haptics fully open up. So let's see what happens here. Here comes the lens. And again, the radialization is their sub-incisional. So it's underneath that incision, you've got to be very cautious. So putting the lens in here. Okay, let's see, let's see. In a situation like this, I wouldn't mind enlarging the incision if you need to. Just don't put too much pressure. Look, come on, I'd rather have the eye a little bit more in primary, but okay, the eye was in the eye. There it is opening up, and now just get it rotated about 90 degrees. I don't want those haptics in that same area where it's radialized. So if you can, rotate it about 90 degrees, something at least. There we go, I like that. That's very good. So good job here. I mean, as a, as a young resident, listen, you're doing a great job. You need to be careful with that viscoelastic because now we've realized too much viscoelastic can put pressure on that capsule and cause it to radialize. And... Mostly, you got to fix the draping here. We can't, we can't live with this draping. It just it irritates me, doesn't it? Irritate you? It also has, you know, more risk for you. Think about it. So now IA coming in by manual approach here and then being just very cautious here. Here I'd be very slow and gentle to not cause too much uh, disruption as the viscosity comes from behind the Iowa forwards. And you, still, again, want to be very cognizant of that one radialized area because last thing you need is for that thing to rip around and have more issues. So looks really good here. Seal up the incisions, call it a day. But yeah, if you're a resident, I have a huge amount of resources for free on cataractcoach.com on the website. You know, there's a 25 part curriculum series. If you read about it, you'd see there are Rexus danger zones. You know what I'm talking about? 
It's on cataractcoach.com. You'll find it. And remember, we also have an amazing podcast every single week where we spill all the secrets of ophthalmology. We'll tell you everything.